we're going to jump right into one of the most contentious topics in statistics, whether you should be frequentist or whether you should be Bayesian. And this is going to be a non-exhaustive take on this topic. But before we focus on me, we should focus on you. What is your situation right now? Are you an academic and your goal is to publish papers and to move the bounds of humanity's knowledge? Or are you an industry and your goal is to help your company make decisions? Or you may be running a book club and you happen to pick a book that uses frequentist methods, but you wrote a book that uses Bayesian methods, which is where I'm at and which is why I'm recording this video. The people in my book club are wondering why I would pick a frequentist book when I seem to be so Bayesian that I would write my own book on it. So, frequentism or Bayesianism, which one is for you? And the idea is, don't be either. You should be a data professional and you should learn both. That is the entire conclusion of the video. So if you stop here, that's all you should take away from this entire thing. Learn both of them. The reason is, as a professional, your job is to help people learn new things. That's whether you're in academia or in industry. And you should know every way of doing that. You should be able to know which tool is right for each situation. And you should understand what all the other professionals around you are doing, whether they're using frequentious tools or Bayesian tools. Lastly, you should know what the right tool is for your situation. And that's going to depend on a lot of questions that are individual to you and where you're at. But if you know both tools, you'll be able to make a choice, not just be locked into one idea. And you really can only do this again, if you know both and you're open to learning both. And then really importantly, if you avoid the identity politics that seems to be prevalent in some of statisticians where we call ourselves Bayesians and all that matters to us is Bayes theorems and those frequentists are so wrong or whether you call yourself a frequentist and those Bayesians are so crazy with their priors and everything that they're doing. Don't be tied to an identity. Be open to learning both. That's the whole point of statistics is to learn new things. The natural question that many of you may have though is why do I use Bayes method more? So let's talk about that. Let's try and talk about what the difference is as well. At a high level, this isn't a rigorous academic study. This is me just giving you the high level overview. So imagine you work for a rocket company like this one here. Let's say you need to get stuff into space. Now we have a $400 million satellite. It's got to be in space in four days, but we need a part to get that rocket finished so it can get into space. We have the last eight lead times for the delivery of this part. And we have them here. It was three days or two days or 1.8 days, but we've got them in our database. We need this part in two days. Are we going to be late? If you take the frequentious point of view, things have what's called long run probabilities. You tend to make conclusions about groups of events and not single events. And we typically would look for a thing called a confidence interval. So the way we would do that is we would take our sample data, we'd calculate a mean and a standard deviation. We would use those numbers to then calculate this other number called a standard error of the mean. We could then calculate a 95% confidence interval of the means. And in this case, we're using SciPy, so it's really easy. This conclusion, as it would be fully worded, is that if we had 100 hypothetical universes where we had eight more part deliveries, what would the mean lead time of those arrivals be? And specifically, what would the range be where five of those means would be over two days? It's quite a mouthful, but that is the conclusion of a confidence interval. And that would be it if that was our analysis. Now here is a set of slides that shows you how we can empirically simulate this by simulating 100 hypothetical universes and calculating the confidence interval for each and then plotting those in this plot here but let's move on to the Bayesian analysis so I can tell you a little bit about that. The Bayesian side focuses more on belief in parameters and a typical output would be a credible interval. 
So in a Bayesian analysis, a modern one in particular, we would define a model using a probabilistic programming language, in this case, PyMC, and we would use that to infer some parameters and sample some future outcomes that we expect to happen. Here are the future outcomes once we've sampled them. And then here's what's called a posterior predictive plot for what all those future outcomes may be. And you can see there's quite the range of lead times here from zero to 35. The density varies, but we've got this big range. So we can make this plot and get the credible interval and see what possible lead times may be. And in this case, the credible interval goes from close to zero to 5.8. And the part is most likely going to be later than two days. Now, why does Bayes work for my situation in the rocket situation? I don't have a lot of data. I wasn't doing comparative hypothesis testing. I wasn't working with structured experimental data. I wasn't working with statisticians or other colleagues who were engineers and such. I didn't care about the mean of a group of data. I cared about the next rocket part delivery. But this isn't to say there is anything wrong with frequentious style analyses. There's just a different set of assumptions and a, assumptions here in a capital A, so it's really clear. The frequentious mindset and philosophy is that models have fixed parameters and the data is random and we're looking for the frequencies of things as you tend to see in the names. The Bayesian mindset is that the parameters are unknown, the data is fixed, and we're more looking for belief in the parameters of this model. The big point though is both frameworks try and do the same thing, which is form a conclusion using data. And if you're here in the year 2022 with me, I am a fan of anybody that uses data and rigorous principled analyses to come to a conclusion because there are many folks that jump wildly to conclusions without any data. So really between Bayesians and Frequentists, I don't understand why there's such a big challenge. We're really just trying to do the same thing at the end of the day. We do face the exact same challenge though, and that is education. I really think statistics education could be much better and there are challenges in both. So let's talk about what those are. In Frequentism, there isn't really a challenge in educating a wide group of people. It's very widely taught from high schools to colleges and all sorts of curriculums. I took an engineering degree and I was exposed to frequentious statistics, but I think it's done particularly poorly. I think a lot of approaches in education teaches a formula and you just follow these steps without really thinking a lot about why you're following these steps or even how these formulas took shape the way they are. Many colleges, even ones that I've been to recently in the last couple of years, still use very ancient methods to teach for quite analysis. So instead of using modern tools like SciPy or other computational libraries, they still use Z-score table lookups like in a book where you have to flip back and forth. And as I mentioned earlier, it's not explained as well as it could be. And what I think this causes is an early bias in uninformed students. If you'll take anecdotal data, that certainly is what happened to me. I thought this was the entirety of the field of statistics. I thought there was no creativity in statistics. I thought it was just a canned set of routines you do if you happen to be in a particular situation. Now, Bayesianism or Bayesian statistics is not nearly as widely taught. I didn't see it in my college or early education at all. And now that I'm in the field, I see that most people only get to this either in very advanced undergraduate programs or in their master's degree. So the good news is that the folks that learn it tend to learn it from first principles and they learn it pretty deeply. So the ones who get the exposure really understand what's going on. But I have found that a lot of the explanations become overly theoretical with lots of math formulas and whatnot. And I think it makes it challenging for people that haven't taken a statistics PhD to follow that sort of education and get into the field and understand what's going on. A lot of places that do teach it stop at the point estimate methodology, which I'll link below, but it's simpler to teach, but misses large swaths of its usefulness and of Bayes theorem's applicability to many situations. And the same legacy ideas tend to crop up over and over again. So there's this thing called conjugate models, which was a way to use Bayes theorem before these newer computational samplers and methods that we have now. And sometimes that's taught as the only way to use Bayes theorem that I've seen. 
And I think sometimes the examples that are used widely, like the eight schools model, don't resonate as well with the day-to-day practitioner. They're more meant as academic examples that just happen to be widely shown because that's the example that is being taught most widely. I would suggest this book, Understanding Statistical Methods by Westwall and Henning. They do a really good job of showing both frequentist and Bayesian style statistics from start to finish, and they have a great comparison of both. So with this one textbook, you'll see the detailed differences and the philosophy behind both methods, and you can learn in one shot. You also can watch this video from Jake Vanderplus, who's a big member of the open source community. He covers the ideas behind both, and he uses modern examples with plots and code, and I will link this video as well. But most of all, use both, both twice, hands-on. Find applied examples, use modern tools like scikit-learn or probabilistic programming and mean languages to avoid having to do the tedious math and more focus on the ideas and the concepts, and then go apply it to your actual problem. Go find something that you're doing, whether you're in academia or industry, and use these methods to see what assumptions hold, what assumptions don't, what's practical, what's impractical. And most of all, do not get hung up on an identity. Don't be a Bayesian. Don't be a frequentist. Be a data professional that can leverage whatever framework to get to the world where we have a better understanding using data. Be able to read other people's work so you know what's happening. And also, again, reinforce your own understanding. And then learn from other people's work what technique is most appropriate for you in your situation. If you do this, you will stand out from others. You're going to have significant credibility. You're going to exude confidence, more than 95% of the people that are out there. You'll have a whole distribution of jobs that you'll be able to take or research groups that you can join. People's prior beliefs about you will be wrong, and they'll certainly have to update their expectations of all the things you could do. And there is no possible way I could have plugged in any more statistics puns in here. So if there is something that you think I could have added or some other idea, let me know what it was. I tried really hard to get them all in here. So if you're part of the book club, which is going on right now, we're going to be learning both hands-on. We're going to do frequentist analysis. We're going to do Bayesian analysis. We're going to reanalyze examples in the Bayesian framework. The book is already written in a frequentist framework. So expect to learn both. And if you're not part of the book club, or you want to be a part of the book club, or you just like the statistics stuff, I like it a lot, as you can tell. So you can follow me on Twitter or join my mailing list or check out my blog, and you'll see a lot more of this stuff. So with that, thank you for sitting through this. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. And I look forward to seeing whatever you do with whatever statistics you decide to use.